Hello again, Major Johnson coming at you with an example problem related to the TNB framework. So um, in the previous video, we introduced that framework and some applications of it with, um, with our solar system. Um, but let's sort of imagine that as an oversimplified helical model. Um, and um, imagine a planet is traveling through um, the universe along a curve param parameterized by this vector function. R of t is equal to the vector function 3 cosine of t, t, and 3 sine of t. So what we want to do here is find the planet's unit tangent vector t, its unit normal vector n, and its unit binormal vector b at a given time, at t equals 0. So we'll go ahead and use some algebra, some MATLAB computations, and even cheat a bit using Calcplot 3D, and um, see if our results make sense graphically at the end, just to, just to double check. Um, so if we look at the Calcplot 3D, um, it actually gives us a TMB framework. And you can see that if we trace this out, um, that framework is constantly changing as the planet flies through three space. Um, so we can actually get this T, N, and B unit vectors at any time if we click this gear over here and check the T, N, B equation box. So that's going to be our sort of our, of, our, of our cheat. But before we go ahead and, and just um, trust Cockplot 3D in that, let's actually find our unit tangent vector and just check to make sure that it matches what um, Cockplot 3D has given us. Um, if it does match, then we'll go ahead and trust Cockplot 3D and we'll just, we'll just um, take those... Uh, N and B components from it. So um, to find T, we first had to find the space function's derivative. So our R prime of T is going to be the vector negative 3 sine of T, 1, and 3 cosine of T. And in order to find the unit tangent vector equation, we have to take that derivative and divide it by the magnitude of that derivative, um, which um, we can find here. And um, cranking through that, we get that's equal to the vector function negative 3 sine of t, 1, 3 cosine of t, all divided by the square root of 10. And if we want to find our tangent vector at the time t equals 0, we just plug 0 in for that. And so um, we get negative 3 sine of 0, 1, and 3 cosine of 0 as our x, y, and z components, um, all divided by square root of 10. And of course, sine of 0 is 0. So our x component becomes 0. Um, we just get 1 over square root 10 for our y component, and our z component becomes 3 over square root 10 since cosine of 0 is 1. And if we want to um, get a decimal form of this, that's just going to be the vectors 0, 0 0.32, and 0 0.95. And if we look at Calcplot 3D, we see that it's given us that same vector when we set the time equal to zero. So it looks like Calcplot 3D is checking out with, um, with MATLAB and our algebraic manipulations here. So it looks like we're in good shape and we can just go ahead and take that N and B from Calcplot 3D. Um, alternatively, you could use the formulas form, which um, if you recall, our normal vector was the derivative of our unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector, and we found b as the cross product of t and n. But that's kind of a lot of work, so let's just steal it. So stealing it from Calcplot 3D, we just end up with our unit normal vector being the vector negative 1, 0, 0. It's pretty simple. And we get our binormal unit vector being 0, negative 0 0.95 and 0 0.32. So um, let's just double check this to make sure that makes sense on our plot. So um, at t equals 0, we should be at the point 3 cosine of 0, 0, and 3 sine of 0, which is um, 3, 0, 0. And if we change um, t equal to 0, we see that our position function does actually give us that coordinate. So um, we're good so far. Um, you can see here that as we lead up to t equals 0, um, we are moving mainly upward, but also a little bit in the y direction. Um, so the unit tangent vector at time t equals 0 being um, 
0, 0 0.32, 0 0.95 makes sense because most of that uh, that velocity at that point is going to be in, in that z, upward z direction. So we're looking good so far with our unit tangent vector at this point. Um, now moving on to our unit normal vector, if we look at this in the xz plane, we can see that the particle is curving towards the origin at t equals 0. And it's curving in the negative x direction, as you can see. So our unit normal vector being uh, the vector negative 1, 0, 0 actually uh, makes a lot of sense because that is the direction that our object is turning in at this given point in time. So our normal vector looks good. Let's check out our binormal vector, which um, we know has got to follow this equation of the cross product of our unit tangent vector and our unit normal vector. So if we use the right hand rule here, our fingers are going to curl from T to N and the thumb's going to point in that direction of B. So it looks like this all makes sense. Our, our framework looks sound and hopefully you can see that this all lines up graphically and algebraically and computationally. And um, this is how you find the T and B framework for a space curve at a specific time. But um, if we sort of animate this, you can see that T and B framework as, um, let's just say this is like the planet um, orbiting the sun that's orbiting the Milky Way. You can see that framework is just constantly changing. Um, but next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to kind of build on this uh, framework and we're going to look at the um, at breaking down acceleration into its normal and tangential components. So more on that next video. Until then, take care.